Cleopatra is one of the most powerful women ever to come out of the ancient Mediterranean world. She ruled Egypt for 21 years, from 51 to 30 BC. When Cleopatra's 18 years old, her father, King Ptolemy XII, Aulates, dies. And Cleopatra then sort of ascends to the throne. But because she's a woman, she can't do it alone. So her brother is made co-regent. The thing about her brother, however, is that he's only 10 years old. Before long, a rivalry ensues, and those aligned with Cleopatra's younger brother seek to dethrone her. But Cleopatra devises a clever way to stay in power. She allies herself with Rome. Cleopatra has two significant relationships in her life, both of which are strategic partnerships to keep her on the throne. One is a partnership with the great Julius Caesar. He helps her shore up her power. And with him, she supposedly has a son named Caesarian. The second, Caesar's top general, Mark Antony. In 43 BC, he becomes part of a new Roman power structure created after Caesar's assassination. Rome comes to be ruled by what's called a triumvirate. This is actually a group of three men, Mark Antony, Marcus Lepidus, and Octavian. Wisely, she begins a strategic relationship with Mark Antony, who promises to support her rule. Their romance becomes the stuff of movie lore. Eventually, Mark Antony is so smitten with Cleopatra that he leaves his wife, moves to Alexandria, and stays with Cleopatra. Cleopatra's aspirations is for Caesarian, her son, to become the king or the ruler of Egypt. Rome doesn't have kings, but at least he could be the legitimate heir of Julius Caesar and the ruler of Rome as well. Octavian says he will spare her and her children, but he will never allow the succession. Cleopatra but takes herself back to her palace, to her mausoleum, considers this deal, and ultimately decides that she has nothing left to live for, and she takes her own life. Octavian goes on to become Rome's first emperor, and Cleopatra will die as the last active ruler of the Kingdom of Egypt. Early historians tell us the method of Cleopatra's death is poison, but in those histories, her story ends there. This was a time of civil war. This is a time of occupation of Egypt. Uh, and a lot of stuff has been lost over time. This kicks off an incredible mystery that lasts to this day. No one knows what happens to her after she dies or where she's buried. With such limited information, where should the search for Cleopatra's remains begin? Cleopatra has a mausoleum and tomb under construction in her palace when she dies. So it makes sense that the tomb should be the first place that we look. The challenge is, the tomb is missing. When Cleopatra's palace is found underwater by archaeologist Frank Gaudio, he believes her tomb should be somewhere inside. The last place we know Cleopatra was when she was alive is her palace. And that was just discovered underwater in 1998. However, not everyone's convinced Gadio will find the tomb. First of all, underwater exploration is incredibly difficult. Secondly, we believe her tomb was unfinished when she died. So the artifacts, relics, statues, and other signs that would lead us there, they weren't put in place yet. But there might be another way to find Cleopatra's tomb. In 2008, archaeologist Kathleen Martinez and her team are exploring the ruins of the Egyptian temple of Tapasiris Magna. As they sweep the area with ground-penetrating radar, they suddenly see what appears to be a network of underground corridors. And these corridors lead to multiple chambers. Martinez believes that these are burial chambers. Martinez is not about to miss this discovery. She's going in herself. She has her team lower her down into the tunnels themselves. From there, she enters into one of the chambers, and she finds the head of a statue. And can you believe it? It's Cleopatra. She also finds a mask that resembles Mark Antony. It's extraordinary to think that other archaeological teams have explored this site and declared that there was nothing to find. 
when all these wonderful artifacts have been discovered. Next, Martinez and her team uncover hundreds of bronze coins. These coins bear the image of Cleopatra, so obviously they're from the time of Cleopatra. They also suggest that this is a place of pilgrimage for Egyptians who left those coins. With each of these discoveries, the team becomes increasingly convinced that they're going to find the tomb of Cleopatra. But just as Martinez believes she's on the verge of a major breakthrough, unrest in North Africa brings her progress to a halt. Democracy, democracy, let us live in liberty! It's complete chaos in the Arab world. You have Libya's leader, Muammar Gaddafi, who is deposed and also murdered. And then in 2011, Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak is overthrown. With all of Egypt in turmoil, Dr. Martinez has no choice but to suspend her dig. This is a worst case scenario for Martinez because once an expedition is suspended, there is no guarantee that it will ever start up again. Fortunately, in 2014, stability returns. The project is able to start again, and they discover new artifacts, more links to Cleopatra herself, but no tomb. Martinez doesn't give up. In 2021, she finds 16 more burial chambers with many skeletons and mummies. Two of these mummies are incredibly special because they appear to be royalty and buried side by side like lovers. One of them is adorned with a crown that's decorated with horns. The other has gilded decorations that look like a wide necklace. Most importantly, the two mummies have golden tongues nestled in their jawbones. Golden tongues are a very important part of ancient Egyptian culture. In the Book of the Dead, gold tongues ensure that the deceased will be able to speak, eat, and drink in the afterlife. A crown, golden tongues, gilded decorations. This was obviously the tomb of no ordinary couple. Could these possibly be the mummified bodies of Antony and Cleopatra? The mummies are eventually x-rayed, and while it is found that they are male and female, no further identification can be made. Martinez concludes that while the mummies are promising, if this really was the tomb of Cleopatra, it would probably be much grander. But who knows? If Cleopatra and Antony had to be smuggled out at the last minute, maybe the tomb wouldn't be so grand. A year later, Dr. Martinez's team makes an even more exciting discovery. Recently, in 2022, Martinez's team found a long tunnel 60 feet underground. The tunnel is attached to a newly found temple of Isis that's part of the complex. This is where Martinez believes that Cleopatra and possibly Antony are both buried. If Cleopatra does, in fact, have a tomb, I think Martinez really is looking in the right direction. And what she has produced so far only strengthens her theory that she is looking in the right place. I think that this is a possibility, although there are a lot of possibilities out there. No matter what, the investigations at Taposiris Magna will give us more information than we had before. And it looks like it'll give us more information on the time of Cleopatra and hopefully Cleopatra herself.